<laughs> oh, thank God that we have all these money woes. <laughs> <laughs> At least we have money. Yeah, really. That's what I tell Greg. The good news is we could pay the state what we owe. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Winter? Oh, Heavenly Father, you pour out so many blessings on us, and we so often take them for granted. We we look for things that that we have no right to, and we um, and we ignore the things that you give us. And so help us to appreciate the blessings you give to us, and uh, and to use those blessings to be a blessing to others. We pray in Jesus' name, Amen. All right, <clears throat> Genesis twenty-seven, which is one to forty. Someone like to start? Sure. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, and he answered, Here I am. He said, Behold, I am old, I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapon, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and prepare for me savory food, such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that I may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game and bring it, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare for me a savory food that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord, before I die. Now therefore, my son, obey my word as I command you. Go to the flock and fetch me two good kids that I may prepare from them savory food for your father such as he loves and you shall bring it to your father to eat so that he may bless you before he dies but jacob said to rebecca his mother behold my brother esau is a hairy man and i am oh that shoots my premature baby he's still hairy well he could have still been hairy you know later not from prematurity well you no he that. might have lost that and then oh, picked up okay. the hair later <laughs> still the, and i oh i get all oh, right yeah i am i am a smooth man perhaps my father will feed me feel me and i shall seem to be mocking him and being bring a curse upon myself and not a blessing his mother said to him up on me be your curse my son only obey my word and go fetch them to me so he went and took them and brought them to his mother and his mother prepared savory food such as his father loved i'll stop there then rebecca took the best clothes of esau her older son which she had in the house and put them on her younger son jacob she also covered his hands in the smooth part of his neck with goat skins then she handed to her son Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father. Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you have told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessings. Isaac said to his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. But oh, my word. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> then, oh. <laughs> then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he blessed him. Are you really my son Esau, he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to eat, so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you... May God give you of heaven's dew and of earth's richness and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob had scarcely left his <coughs> father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. 
Then he said to him, My father, sit up and eat some of my game, so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac said to him, Who are you? I am your son, he answered, your firstborn, Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came and blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? He has deceived me these two times. He took my birthright, and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, Haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him lord over you, and have made all his relatives his servants, and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from your neck. Hmm. That's 40, right? Yep. <clears throat> yep. All right. So have you ever misrepresented yourself? Oh, Trying to be sure. someone else, different age, fake ID. Okay, um, fake ID, I'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Embellishing a resume, I mean, you know, there's yeah. any number of things. Yeah. Okay, all right. What was the result to you or anyone else? I don't remember I don't remember ever mm, I kept trying to think ever doing it that bad truly I got into the agora <laughs> <laughs> the local angle <laughs> I lived in the country and I never had to I never even knew had any, any place to go <laughs> no I didn't and I never had any I never knew what faking an ID was till probably I was married and mm -hmm. heard people talk about it. Maybe when my kids were teenagers was the first time I ever heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think because I remember going out for a Euros and beer when I was and I, I'm pretty sure I was living in the dorms at the time and I wasn't 21 when I was living at the dorms. I don't know, I didn't make a fake ID, but I'm trying to figure out how I would have gotten away with it. I know I wasn't buying, maybe that's how I... Were you tall? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it was, I mean, it was on campus, so, you know, they mm. card everybody. So maybe just because I wasn't buying, I managed to squeeze by or something. I don't know. I'm trying to remember that now. That's weird. I'd have to go back... And figure out the time that, like, when that was. Maybe well, did you have to be 18 to buy beer? It was 21. Or was it 21? Yeah. yeah, see, I'm old enough it was 18. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I mean, when I was in the dorms, there was guys that had beer in their dorms, you know, and there, there was a, a party or two that I went to, you know. Mm -hmm. but, um, but that was a little different. So. <clears throat> All right. Um... Why was getting this deathbed blessing so important? Oh, I kind of wondered that myself, but I yeah, think me it too. must have been the culture that was, it was obviously very important. I mean, okay. it seemed that it would come to pass. Yeah. Yeah, and now, and now that's the thing, is what they really believed that whatever, that, that there was some sort of magic to a deathbed blessing that what and you know in it in a sense you're going to look at it normally when if if somebody does that you can see even when god's not sort of manipulating things to make it happen um if if people are told this is what's going to happen you know there's a certain degree of sort of self-fulfilling prophecy where people think it's going to and so they sort of subconsciously manipulate events to cause that to happen um you know, he had already 
um, well, we'll talk about that later. But um, then I yeah. just thought if it was just the two people, like usually in that case, if you're if you're going to get everything from your dying parent with no witness, mm -hmm. you know. But I guess if that's the culture, and that's my father promised me. But yeah, you know, back <coughs> then you you didn't have to. Well, <laughs> on the one hand, it didn't have to be in writing. On the other hand, sometimes you had to slaughter several animals. To, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, it just depends on the, you know, on the context. Nowadays, we just sign a piece of paper for everything, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, they had different kinds of of covenants and and things like that. Right. Um, what did Jacob hope to get out of this blessing? I wonder if he wanted to please his mother. I, I don't know if there was... I mean, because he already had the birthright. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I, I don't know if he understood even... I, I don't know. Right. So, yeah, now, here's the thing. The blessing and the birthright were two different things. But they were sort of... In this case, they're in a sense they were kind of lumped together, you know. So in, in a sense, what really happened here is it was confirmed that um, that the you know that the the older would serve the younger, which is what was said even at right. um, before they were born, and um, and that was fulfilled. And so yeah, I mean, what what Jacob was looking for here. It, it, um, you know, he was looking for this sort of power and authority, and um, you know, the, the the right of the firstborn in more than just a property sense. <clears throat> All right, in twenty-seven twenty, why does Jacob say, "Your God," which you know, Anna Marie already sort of noticed the irony of that passage. Um, he says, your God instead of our God. God, I don't think, was well known. Okay. You know, I read the this book I mentioned before that was a, kind of a novel about Abraham and Sarah. And it's like Abraham had to introduce God, even to Sarah, and to everybody. And so I think there are early on in the Old Testament it was a matter of people getting to know God and and I suppose today there are probably kids who would refer to God as your God because, I've heard it because they don't know him mm -hmm. I've heard it from kids who grew up and were confirmed here I'm sure that's that have true. referred to this place as my parents church mm-hmm yeah yeah so um which they're still on the roster here. <laughs> oh, I'm sure of that too. <laughs> and, it's and one it, of my it, biggest frustrations. I, just, I, I, I hear that and or, or see it and I go, ah, mm. what, mm. what do I do with that? <laughs> Sometimes know? it could just be nothing negative, but just like a point of reference. Maybe, but well, it's but, not necessarily intended to be derogatory, but. You know, at the same time... Why isn't it your church? Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, you're still a member. Yeah. And that therein lies one of our problems. <laughs> <laughs> at least yeah. in my eyes. That's true. There's pros and cons to leaving names on the roster. Um, Not, you won't get a pro from me. <laughs> well, here's the pro. As long as your name's on the roster, we have a legitimate excuse to contact you anytime we want. And that's true. All right. We can call you up and say, how you doing? How's your relationship with God? But that is not done as it should be. No, no. We don't take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, so, but, um, so yeah, then we're, we're then it's, at that point it's a wasted opportunity and, and it does no good. It's, it, it ceases to be a pro. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we need to take advantage of that. That's right. I agree. There should be a whole task force that does nothing 
but look after the delinquent members. Because I think we are sinful or disobedient. We're disobedient to God to let them sit there. We really are. So there we are. You don't, don't want to, to be on another da, da, committee, da, do you, Anne Marie? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and I'll tell you why I would not want to be on that one because these people have heard from me over the years till they're sick of it. <laughs> and I, I, I think there need to be enough different people that they say, oh, they really do care. It's not just that whatever her name is, that <laughs> church lady. <laughs> really. I'm sure they're, they roll their eyes when they hear my name or they see on their ID. Oh! Don't answer! Don't answer! <laughs> <laughs> That's the church lady. Church police. You could be yeah. called worse. <laughs> I know that. And it doesn't bother me. I just feel like yeah, it's, it's a detriment to, to them because mm -hmm. it, it, it needs to be more um, in, uh, other people involved to, make, to, to show the importance. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm, that's I'm my hoping sense. that our. Um, that when we start implementing interest groups, that that will help to bring some of them back. I don't want them to come back from interest groups. <laughs> no, but I want them to come back because they want to be here with God, right? And and learning about God. Yeah, but but here's the thing. Got to get them in the door. Yeah, you <laughs> you know well here it it goes like this. It's sort of like when we expect our culture to recognize Sunday and not plan things, um, soccer games on Sunday morning, all right? So they don't, they don't recognize that anymore. Yeah, sure Why? Because they've lost that meaning, all right? And as uh, um, somebody that I just tremendously respect, a member of, of my last church, would, would tell me, you can't blame the lost for acting like they're lost. <laughs> That's very good. All right? And I thought that was so profound, and it's just really stuck with me, mm -hmm. that that we can't expect people to act like Christians if they're not. And and I'm, I, I, I do recognize the importance of interest groups, but my fear is that they became members the first time, many of them, because of an interest group, not because of the gospel. So there you go, that's all I'm saying. Fair enough. We shall see. <laughs> what? I said, we shall see. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so, yeah, he says, your God, um, not our God. Um, and, and, yeah, there was, see, at this time, there was lots of gods out there. Yes. You know, as far as they were concerned, there was gods under every rock. And um, it's funny because our culture is actually getting back to that. Yes. This, you start, start looking at like new age religion, pantheism, and all that kind of stuff, and um, and that's all sort of coming back, and uh, people praying to trees and whatnot, and um, so, <coughs> but they you know they thought that every nation had its own god and and all that sort of thing, and so yeah when when Abraham comes along with this sort of monotheism, um, that was a pretty bizarre concept and 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 and, and so unique that modern scholars looking back at um, at the Old Testament insist that that um, that that Yahweh was seen as one God among many all right which to a lot of the Israelites he was I mean they found pottery that say um, Yahweh and his wife Asherah, and um, <laughs> where they they completely, which Asherah was Baal's wife, and, and so you know to they they it was so they were so mixed up, and you know and, and when you look at the fact that here they they go to the temple one day and the high places the next day, I mean mm. they they were pretty messed up, but but sort of the official representatives of God always saw him as the only God. Um, the you know the prophet the true prophets and um, uh, they they were they would always say no God is the real God Yahweh mm -hmm. is the real God and, and and these other gods are fake and then you have you know examples like Elijah on Mount Carmel and, and stuff like that so um, <clears throat> so what is Jacob's relationship with the Lord like at this point.
Well, he's like one of those people saying, my parents' church, my dad's God. Yeah. I didn't hear the last part. <coughs> My you know, like the God. people who say, my parents' church, this is my dad's God. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder about Rebecca's relationship with God, to be kind of doing this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and we'll see it again when we get to um, to Rachel and, mm -hmm. and Laban. Where she's <laughs> it just goes on and on. Yeah. No wonder God <laughs> called them a stiff-necked people. <laughs> I just keep wondering why he said, okay, you know, here's, we, we talked about this a little bit this morning in Bible class, but, um, all right, so what, you know, what is, what does God love more than anything else? All right, his son. Okay, so what does he do with his son? He puts him in our hands. Yeah. We crucify him. All right, so, so who else does he love just as much as his son? Us. Okay, so who does he, who, who does, all right, and, and we can be with him just through hearing the gospel and coming to faith. So who does he put in charge of, of spreading the gospel? Us. <laughs> what were you thinking? You know, <laughs> One of those many questions. We do such a lousy job of it. And, and, and I constantly, every time I mess up, and I go, God, you could have had angels doing this. And they would have done it perfectly. What were you thinking? <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's God, and he has his reasons, and, and I always figure it has something to do with the fact that we can give a first-hand account of God's forgiveness, and angels can't. Yeah, because we should know. We know all about it, yeah. Because if, if it was angels, it'd be easy for us to say, well, yeah, it's easy for you to say, you know. You're never tempted with all that yeah. stuff. Oh, well, wait a minute, there was Satan. Well, yeah, but, you know. <laughs> One time, you know, <laughs> we get it every day. Well, he's got his friends. Yeah. So, all right. Um, do you think that Isaac could take back his blessing? Yeah. Couldn't he just say, it? "Oh, wait, no, that was intended for Esau." Well, yeah, it would seem so to me because if the the person receiving it was deceitful, they didn't deserve to receive it, and <coughs> Isaac or Jacob should probably have been, uh, I don't know, whatever they did to them, hung by his fingernails or something. I thought so too, mm -hmm. but then down here it says that Isaac as heir and steward of God's covenant blessing acknowledged that he had solemnly transmitted that heritage to Jacob. So, once mm -hmm. he did it, he couldn't undo it. It was irrevocable. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, but, you know, at the same time, this is, God is, um, is working. This is, this is one of the other things that amazes me about God. You talk about how we're so imperfect and um, you know, and, and God's got these great plans, and why would He use imperfect people? But the thing is, He's glorified through that, because God actually works through our sin to bring about the to fulfill His plans. And it's always amazed me that that you go, well, gee, if Jacob hadn't pulled this, it wouldn't have, you know, it wouldn't have worked out the way that that God had planned. And well, does that mean that God wanted Jacob to do that? I would say no. God never wants us to sin. God just probably knew Jacob would do that. He knew he would. I had to work around him. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, just you know, it's God knew that that he would sin and and said, yeah, well, you know, he actually plans for our sin because he knows we will. <laughs> And so, you know, and that's the amazing thing. We we can't thwart God's plans with our sin. <laughs> you know, I mean, you look at our redemption. Uh, that's all contingent on us killing the Son of God. <laughs> Which, I knew we would. <laughs> we did. Yeah, he can count on us. You go, well, that's that's horrible. It's like, you know, somebody asked me the question this morning: Does God trust people ever? <laughs> that's a good question isn't it a great question <laughs> and, and, uh, well let's see the psalmist says trust in God not in princes and um, 
and you know as you sort of go through does God ever sort of count on us with anything not really other than sinning he can other, count on us yeah to he can count on us to sin that's like to I mess up and he has to fix it yeah. <laughs> I always think back to the passage in Esther where God or where Mordecai says you know if you're not the one to save the Jews somebody will so yeah it, it got as God's purpose is always served however it it's just there's some of those things that I just don't think we can explain. And well, we know them, but we can't explain them. But we see it over and over that when when God uses our sin, our shortcomings, and He bails us out and, and he, he takes care of everything, He fixes everything, what happens? He's glorified through it. Yes. Because we see that God is greater than our sin. Mm -hmm. Right? And you take that all the way to the cross, and it's the ultimate glory that we give to God is for what happened on the cross. And um, and he's glorified through that, and um, and it's all because of our sin. Yeah. And so you know, it really, you look at if, um, boy, if, if things were dependent on us, then who'd get the glory? If if we actually did pull it off, you know, then we would say, oh, look at us, look what we managed, you know. <laughs> and so you know, I always have to, well, God gets the glory because not only does does He accomplish it, He accomplish He accomplishes it. In light of, in, in spite of, and actually using our sin um, to carry out His purposes, it's amazing. I mean, just imagine planning that way. Imagine, imagine running a business that way. <laughs> All right, so, so here we go. We're gonna set this up, and and we're gonna plan on our employees royally screwing this up, <laughs> and then stealing us blind. Yeah, and, and then everything will work out great. <laughs> That would be an amazing business model. <laughs> Pretty much impossible, though, if you're oh, not God. I don't you know. think you could get a loan based on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just imagine that meeting with the loan officer. <laughs> so here's the plan. <laughs> right. Um, all right, I think we kind of answered this, but um, let's just for clarity, uh, God fulfilled this stolen blessing, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about this sort of kind of magic idea, all right? So what does this tell us about God? That he gets what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> and like you just said, he's merciful, he's good. And he always is accomplishing for us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, boy, if, to see God's mercy is grace, you know, through something like this, it's just, you know, it just, he's very different from, you know, I think that stuff like this shows how different our God is from the other so-called gods, um, the false gods. Because, because those gods, there's no mercy and grace like this that God would actually use somebody's sin and, and bring good from it you never see that in other religions they'd be punished yeah yeah this is you know here's your all right you know you take something like this and and you give this one to the Hindus and here's your karma you know <laughs> like well okay let's see he lies cheats and steals and uh, it all works out for to his advantage what? <laughs> you know? And the best that they could do is, yeah, well, in his next life. You know? <laughs> Not so good for you. You'll be a grasshopper. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Um, compare 27-27 with Luke 22-48. Uh, verse 27 says, So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him. Judas kissed Jesus, but Jesus said to him, Jesus, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Right. Okay. Okay. So, betrayed with a kiss. Mm -hmm. Both times. See, because this was the, you, you see Isaac, the, you know, he's still kind of skeptical because he hears Jacob's voice. Mm -hmm. And he's going, something's not 
Come give me a kiss, because I know how you smell. My eyes are bad, but my hearing and my sense of smell are good. And sense of taste, apparently. And Rebecca was right on there, man. She knew. Yeah? Yeah. So, you know, he probably at some point commented about, you know, the smell to mm -hmm. Rebecca. And she, and she sort of logged that in the back of her mind. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Just, it's amazing. But we remember she Rebecca. Was. And she was eager for that be, to, to be elevated and become the wife of a rich man. But Rebecca was Rebecca. Hmm. She was God's child. Right. So, speaking of Rebecca, look at uh, 2729. Um, we already mentioned this one, but. Um, May nations serve you, people bow down to you, be lord over your brothers, may the sons of your mother bow down to you, may those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. Right? How does that fulfill Genesis twenty five, twenty three? Because that's probably what Genesis twenty five, twenty three says. <laughs> <laughs> this earlier. Yeah. Well, it says the elders shall serve the younger. And yep. That's just what happened. That's exactly what happened. So. Maybe she felt she was, she was helping God fulfill his plan. And, and that's sure. the question. Is she forcing <coughs> God's promise? Is this is this uh, sort of Ishmael all over again? Could be. Okay. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> but maybe she was pondering in her mind and she said, I don't see how this is ever going to work out. Now God must mean for me to do something here. I'm going to help. I'll do my best as a good Christian woman. <laughs> That's a good Eighth Commandment approach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately we don't really get that from what, everything that we see from Rebecca. So. Oh, no. <laughs> it could be! <laughs> like to, you know, put the best construction on everything. But, um, but we also know that she loved Jacob more than Esau. And then that's too bad. <sighs> Isn't that sad? You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I had, I, one of the commentator I read a lot says that Jacob was a mama's boy and he liked to hang around the kitchen and cook and stuff. And Esau was a hairy hunting man. And yeah. well, it's not his fault he was hairy. That seemed to be a real problem. I know. <laughs> I mean, exactly how hairy was this guy? <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing. He was hairy enough that she strapped goat skin to him. <laughs> Uh, well, see that I'm thinking really, and he fell for that because when he touched his hands, you know that's a, these are that you know these are his hands, and I'm thinking really, that's pretty hairy. I wonder if he had that disease. There is a disease that causes that, mm -hmm. and it's some endocrine dis mm -hmm. disease because they tested Aiden for it because he's hairy. Mm -hmm. Just a spe it's mostly on his back. On elbows. So, but yeah, I mean, he had it. The, and the thing, the thing I think about is, you strap like uh, skin or, or something like that. Kid, goat skin, kid it, skin. But it's it's going to be kind of thick, and it's not going to be warm like regular skin unless you've got. I mean, you'd have to like have it on for a while and and maybe like have a coat over it or something to I'll make sure Rebecca that... Rebecca figured that all out. She was pretty sharp. She probably said, "Now, Jacob, you've got to wear this." For at least twelve hours <laughs> before you go to your father, well, and when you're sitting down, put your hands, arms between your legs, and then whenever he wants, to, it'll be warm. Your hands, your oh. arms will be warm. And your Unless hands. Isaac's hands were kind of like calloused and stuff, so he didn't have as much feeling there, and so you just kind of check for hair. Good. 
and he, you know, and that was sort of what he was checking for, and he wasn't really thinking about how war because who would have imagined somebody would strap goat skin to? to well, yeah, this has got to be the hairy one. <laughs> you know, I like, guess that's true. You know, I mean, like, yeah. I think about strapping goat skin to my son. You know? <laughs> so, to, to to Isaac's credit. He gave his son and, and his wife the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> hmm. Alright. Um, okay, so which... I guess we were sort of already answering this. Why do you think Isaac fell for this trick? I don't know. I mean... And on the one hand, he was about to die. Probably didn't feel good. If Yeah, I mean, he was sort of... That's why he was giving the blessing when he did. This was... He was sort of on his deathbed. Now, I, I don't know... Um, it was... I guess it was a while. But if, if he was sort of at this point in his life, that, um, that maybe he wasn't, like, dying that day or anything no but because he says in the beginning I do not know the day of my death he right. just says I am old but if he's getting old and his senses yeah. are getting kind of dull and you know maybe just not quite as as sharp as he used to be a little bit of senility or whatever mm, still pretty clear know. thinking but you know just not really expecting this is Spent a lot of time thinking about what he's going to say and do, and um, not a whole lot of time going, now, how could my wife manipulate this? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the sort of thing you spend a lot of time on, usually? Although, you look at their marriage, and you, well, <laughs> you imagine this sort of constant buying for, you know, I mean... We have enough trouble with like with the kids and figuring out discipline and and they one of them messes up and you go you're grounded for a week and the other one goes week's kind of harsh isn't it you know it wasn't you know and, and so you go well eh, you know and you go well but you know and, and so just where we're not sort of playing favorites and we still have trouble with all the sort of discipline and 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 what what's right and wrong and and um and too much or too little or whatever and we think boy if, when you when you're the, the when you've got when she likes Jacob and he likes Esau and and they're sort of each sort of vying to get the other one ad, advantages and stuff. Hey, what kind of a marriage would that be? It wouldn't be any fun at all. <laughs> I just can't imagine. No, it's hard enough as it is not to you know be on the competing with each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, all right. So compare Jacob's and Esau's blessings. We've got uh, Jacob's blessing in verse uh, twenty-seven and following, and then Esau's blessing. Esau is cursed. Okay. Yeah, that's Basically, much. yeah. Until the end, where it says that you will break, he will yeah. break loose from the yoke around his neck on his brother. You see, like he says. Um, um, may God give you of heaven's dew and earth's richness. And then we um, look at, es at uh, Esau. He says, your dwelling will be away from earth's richness, mm -hmm. away from the dew of heaven above. Mm -hmm. And um, and we have with Jacob, nations serve you, people bow down to you, lord over your brothers. And then with Esau, you'll live by the sword and serve your brother. And so it's sort of this this taking Jacob's blessing and, and flipping it on its head. It's the exact opposite. So, <laughs> thanks a lot, Dad. <laughs> yeah, it makes me want to get up every morning. <laughs> yeah. Almost child abuse. <laughs> verbal abuse. Just about, yeah. Yeah, because you, you, know, you think about uh, if you you know if you tell a kid you yeah. can't do it, yeah. they're going to go I can't do it. You're nothing but a jerk. You're not going to pass right. this year. You're going to fail. Yeah. You're just, you know. How awful. 
So, you're like, man, Isaac. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, if, if Isaac was, um, you know, there was a, this whole family had a special connection with God, whether they deserved it or not. Mm -hmm. And he may have been speaking prophetically here. I mean, clearly he was, because it's exactly what happened. Well, and he had to have known what the, unless Rebecca didn't share it with him about the the uh, older would serve the younger, or the stronger would, you know, the, the yeah, back in 25. So, I don't know. Except for he, he wasn't trying to fulfill it. No. So, until he, yeah, the second one. Mm -hmm. So you sort of wonder, did, did he remember that? Or did he, you know, did mm -hmm. he, after he realized, after he realized that, oh, wait, this is the real Esau, did he go, oh. Yeah, you have to, I do wonder about that. I remember this was, set. you know, there's so many of these things where you wish that you could go back and, and sort of be a fly on the wall and see mm -hmm. all the details and, um, you know, how did this actually go down? Well, a fly on the wall, they could translate Hebrew. But. <clears throat> All right. Um, if God's plans depended on our virtue and faithfulness, how would that change things? Well, probably nothing would get done. <laughs> I mean, it would be miserable. <laughs> God would constantly be going, Oh! <laughs> but, you know, if he waited for me, I'd have to be telling him, "Well, you're just give me a, I just give me a few more minutes." I okay. <laughs> I I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> when I get up, I'll think about this for you. But but till then, I need to have a nap. You know, and and every once in a while, we'll we'll sort of pull it off, you know. <laughs> stumble into it yeah basically you know and and but it those are the exceptions and and even then we don't do it perfectly and 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 when all is said and done we go oh wow that really worked out well <laughs> i mean like i did what i was supposed Surpri to do surprise. but it turned out so much better than i was expecting <laughs> oh <laughs> Cool. Thanks. It's the it's the classic. This is this happens to every pastor, and and it's and it seems to be the norm. It's the times where you like you preach a sermon and you get all done and, and you go, oh that was that was awful. I, I I rushed through preparing it and you know and 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 it was that was abysmal. I I, I hope that you know. All right, God, you can work through that because you're God, certainly not because of anything that I did. And, you know, and, and just if it, worst case, just, you know, make everybody forget, you know. <laughs> and then, like, you're, like, shaking hands afterward and, and people come up to you, oh, that was exactly what I needed to hear. And you go, really? <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> yeah, like. Great, and then you know, and then there's the the ones where you think, man, I just I nailed that oh, one, yeah. you know, and, and then it, you get nothing. <laughs> you, and, or and, somebody else like, did you prepare for this? Yeah, yeah, it's just like everybody forgets it, you know, and and stuff. I remember one time I we were doing this thing. It was when I was in Wisconsin. We had um, it was an outdoor service, um, like down at the park on a like a. a a trailer bed kind of thing that oh, we had okay. set up and that and uh and i go i'm getting ready for the service now i had already we'd already had our sort of regular service earlier that morning so i'd already preached the sermon once um but then i, I go and i'm getting ready for a service and getting all this stuff together and i had left my sermon sitting on the little podium that we had there it was gone and the mm. best I, there was like no wind that day but mm. all I can figure out is that the wind, that there must have been some freak wind that blew it. And so, half my sermon, you know. And they're like, that's okay, Pastor, just wing it. And I'm going, yeah. <laughs> and and I got it all done, you know. And I can sort of remember the main points. And so I would just kind of 
ad-libbing through it, and 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 I get all done afterwards. Like, Pastor, that was the best sermon ever. <laughs> Why did I spend so much time preparing these things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, there you knew you knew your stuff, despite. But I was just going to tell you, you could just may as well not even try, because this morning Larry and I had completely opposite thoughts about your sermon. Yeah. So don't even try. <laughs> just give the message, and it will hit the spot it's supposed to hit. Well, you know. God will see to it. And, and that's that's why that apple's sitting there. I just plant seeds. And uh, God makes them grow. Yes. So. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so would God's plan have been fulfilled if Jacob hadn't been so deceptive? Yes. Okay. All right. How? Oh. I don't know, but it would have been. <laughs> All right, good answer. <laughs> yep, because God's plans always are. That's right. So, uh. <clears throat> All right, if this story took place, or the other way of looking at it is, well, God knew that he was going to, and so it's sort of a stupid question. All right. All right, if this story took place today, what might Jacob try to steal? You know, what would be sort of the, the modern equivalent to this? The will. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. The documents. The he might have said, you can give me the keys to the, what do they call it, in the bank. The safety deposit the box. safety deposit box. Yeah. So, all right. Or, or just sort of manipulate, you know, find out what's in the will mm-hmm. and, and go, oh, well, um, you sort of try to manipulate things in, in one way or another to get the amounts changed or, or something like that. <clears throat> Alright. Um, how do we see God's plan of salvation in Jesus Christ working through this narrative? I do not know. Any ideas? Well, it refers to <coughs> by um, what was it? the kiss of a trail. So that you know, that's like a Formal. reference to as what's going on now, what's mm-hmm. going to happen mm-hmm. to Jesus. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yep, definitely a parallel there. Um, we also just see that God's got all this figured out in advance. Yeah, I think that that's one of the really important things about about all of, uh, especially the Old Testament, that we see that God's laying out this plan and He's using sinners to do it. And and it even gets clarified. Um, you know, it's like one of those things where we go, well, what's the point of the genealogies? You know, because they're so boring to read. Mm-hmm. But um, but you look at you start looking at who those people were, mm-hmm. and and you've got Gentiles, you've got you know a prostitute, you've got like all of these people that just seem like the least likely people yeah. um, to be included in the lineage of of the savior of the world. You know, you sort of expect this long line of kings, but the kings would be horrible ancestors because most of them were basically pagans. Mm-hmm. You know, and. Um, and and so you you have a bunch of, of sinners, but but for the most part faithful sinners um, or forgiven sinners, or you know, and we see and and in those in that lineage of Jesus, we see people like Jacob, um, who were really pretty lousy people, but Jesus came to be one of us, and um, and Jesus knew it too because again in studying John he goes up to whoever there and says uh, oh look here's an Israelite with no guile and he was thinking of Jacob so it's, it's referred to <laughs> it's remembered yeah right. so yeah it, it's just it's amazing to, to see this plan and all of the things that, that happen to make everything fall into place to prepare 
the world to prepare Israel to prepare everyone uh, for Jesus coming and and God used sinners all the way um, to save sinners <coughs> and Jesus became just like us except for the sin part but then ultimately took the sin on him too alright any other questions or comments about this one and it ends on a happy note he'll throw his yoke off your neck <laughs> yeah even that, it's, it's not like, even though Esau's been duped and everything else, it, oh, it, you'll still be a great nation, you'll still, um, you know, yeah, you're going to have some rough times, but it'll all work out. So it's not that, that God hated, you know, that God, you know, get you for being duped, you know. Yeah. It's not a, all right, let's close the prayer. Heavenly Father, you use sinners to accomplish your goals, and your goal is our salvation. And so we pray that you um, be with us as we go out and, and keep us from sin, uh, because we know that you can certainly work through us if we don't sin, um, but we're going to keep on sinning, not that we want to, but knowing we will. Um, forgive us our sin and, and work through us anyway. And bring others to know of your salvation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.